This is Matt Barlow from Ashes of Aries. This is Nora from Battle Beast. This is Samuel from Animal. This is Adrian Cowan from Seven Fires. This is Eric A.K. from Flotsam and Jetsam. You are listening to the Great Metal Debate Podcast. Hey, the Piper, here we go. Welcome, Great Metal Debate fans. This is Brian coming at you from Madison, Wisconsin. And I'm here with Matt Smith. Matt, why don't you tell us who you are and who you play for? Hey, this is Matt from Theocracy. I am uh, the vocalist and the songwriter for the band. Uh, we are here in Madison getting ready to play the Mad with Power Fest uh, tonight. And uh, a lot of great bands on the bill, so we're excited to be part of it. Thanks, Matt. appreciate you being with us, taking the time. You, get, you guys aren't touring right now, per se. What's that like for the band when you're not touring? What's the downtime like? Well, it's not really downtime because everybody works day jobs. Yeah. So it's it's uh, it's actually kind of the opposite. It's more difficult to sort of schedule tours and things like that. We usually do, you know, short tours in Europe for the most part. Mm-hmm. And then so far in the States, it's been mostly kind of random one-off stuff like this. And yeah. we're, but we're open to... to uh, string together something a little more substantial than right. that, you know, sometime in the in the future, hopefully. Are you guys able to get together to practice? Do you do it through uh, file sharing, or how's that? Yeah, we get together. It's actually, we're, um, I'm in Athens, Georgia, and the other guys are, are around the Atlanta area, mm-hmm. so we're we're only, you know, one to two hours apart, you know, right. depending on, and, and um, for years, the guys would drive out to, to my studio out in the country, and that's where we would rehearse, but that's yeah quite a haul for most of them and then once once Ernie our, our drummer joined the band his house is sort of well first of all he's got a, a nice big basement with room you know to set up and, and his house is kind of a nice midpoint for everyone so so we just meet there and rehearse that's good that's yeah. good so um, I always ask everybody that I interview this because you know there was a moment when I was young and I was listening to some metal rock and I was like this I love this music I'm going to listen to this for-. did you have a moment of epiphany where you were like this is the music I'm going to listen to. This is what I want to do. It, it just brought you to where you are now. I did, yeah. I mean, I love the music and, and, and the bands, you know, for my, my buddy, my best friend from from school, from high school, elementary school and high school, Chuck, he introduced me to, to bands. And so I love the music, but the, the epiphany moment for me was Queen Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, he heard, and it was actually, it was actually, after Empire had come out, and he had gotten Operation Live Crime, which, funny enough, was here in Madison, Wisconsin. Wow! And um, and so he showed me that, and that was that was it for me. It was like it was like wow, this can be something completely different than what I'd heard before. So that's definitely the, the they're big definitely moment. Epiphany band. That's, yeah. that's just the way yep, they're. Yep, yep. So. I, I want you to talk influences, but also like maybe focus more on the content of what of what you sing about. Right. Just, just what what are your influences there too? Not just the music, but the. the... Um, well, it's kind of a wide variety. I mean, we're a Christian band, so everything comes from that right. perspective, or well, you know, my perspective, you know, sure. from that sort of that worldview, and it could be about. But sort of under that umbrella, I think it's a wide range of topics. You know, it can be dreams I had or things that are, are weighing on my heart or things that I'm feeling passionate about or, you know, some songs are inspired by things that friends of mine go through. You know, it's a... It's a you know, I think a lot of times in, in, uh, in Christian music especially, you know, it, it, you know, it can... It's a cliche that it can be one dimensional, and I think sometimes that's true. Uh-huh. You know, and, and I, we try to not be that. You know, we try to, to, I try to approach it just, it's like, you know, that's what I believe and that's my worldview, but I'm a human like everybody else, and so, right. you know, I'm tackling anything that comes to mind basically, content wise, you right. know. Um, but there has to be some sort of link, um, something. That I feel personally. Not right now, thank you. Um, 
there has to be something that that I feel sort of personally uh, attached to, you know, yeah. in one way or another. There, most of the songs are personal, but some of them aren't. Some of them are historical or whatever else. But there has to be some some uh, some hook to get me into it. Right. You know? Well, since you, since you mentioned some bands I know that are Christian, like a. a, a uh, they, uh, Missy Avila from Your Chance to Die. She's a Christian, but they don't identify themselves as a Christian band, even though they sing about it. Does that play a major part in what you write and what you speak about? Uh, how, how big a role is it in your music, I guess? It's, it's pretty big. I mean, it, it's, it's you know, all of our, our stuff definitely falls under that umbrella. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's kind of a... I don't really think about it too much, you know. It's, it's I always say that when people ask because it, it's it's you know I, I write what's on my heart. Hey, you know? I understand. And, and, yeah. and I think like I don't know. I just think it's weird when when uh, like there's Christian bands and they're they're kind of coy about it and they try to like disguise it or whatever. And it's like, well, write what you want to write. Like if you want to write Christian songs, write Christian songs. If you want to write, you know. Not Christian songs or normal right. songs. Write that. I mean, like, so that's just kind of how I approach it. I, I don't really. I wasn't even going to bring it up, and then, but so you, you know, you mentioned that's your influence, and I, I totally understand. So, um, what do you think's your most impactful song for you, like musically and emotionally, or you know, are they separate? You know, what what's the song that you feel like you put the most into or got the most out of? I know that's a tough question, and it's okay to have more than one. No, for for me personally, it's the song "Mirror of Souls." Yeah, yeah it's 24 minutes, and it's like um, I love the theatricality of it and the emotion of it. You know, it really get you know gets me. You know, I love the uh, I don't know the peaks and valleys, and, and yeah. uh, it's just it's it's an emotional song for me to perform, and then it's. It was kind of, you know, we don't have a lot, especially up to that point, not a lot of sort of storytelling songs like that. Right. So it was something, that was something that I always admired in, in some of my favorite songwriters. And it was a thing that I never knew if I could do. So once we, we did it, you know, I, I'm, I'm still really proud of it. And I think it's, it's uh, cool. I'm sure some say it's too long, but. But uh, that's my favorite. Hey, listen, you know, I'm an ADHD freak. Like, it's killing me, all the people talking in here right now. But you can, your songs keep my attention. I think oh, that good, speaks good, good. volumes Thanks. to it. You know, I, I can listen to an 11-minute song that you play and go, oh, I got that. I'm, with you. I'm still that. with you at the end. I mean, I'm not just blowing smoke up your butt. That's, that's a true thing. Um, so Ghost Ship was 2016. Um, what's, what's new? You got new material coming out? You guys writing or... I'm, I'm kicking around some ideas, but I'm not really sure. I, I got really, really burnt out the last couple of years. Because yeah. um, well, I have a studio, and so I, I record and mix other bands, and mm -hmm. I'm, I'm traveling constantly, and yeah. the other guys all work. And, and so sort of, I think everything kind of caught up to me. And, uh, and like, I don't know, it gets harder and harder. The more albums you do, in a way, because sure. there's more, there's more pressure, there's more people expecting things, there's more, and I don't worry so much about other people, but you know, I'm always so conscious about if I do something, I want it to. You know, I did a really stupid thing when the first album came out, and I, I said publicly that we would, we would never record a song that that we thought was an okay song or that was any level below anything that else that we've done and you know, not just obviously I'm not saying that everything we do is great or whatever but I'm saying you know the standard that I try to reach it's like it's just almost agonizing to get there with every song and so for some reason that gets harder and harder after four albums it's like I don't know it's just I guess it's the old cliche about being your own biggest critic or whatever. Well, that's what I'm saying. You put a lot of pressure on yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things that I loved about some interviews I was listening to, and you you talked about, and very obviously was were passionate about. You said all I want to do is write songs. That's all. And, and that was my question. You kind of walked into, you know, does that wane? And, you know, and you, you just said that it does because of the pressure. You think? I think so. Uh, especially the last couple of years, I've really struggled with it. So it's kind of. But, yeah, the, I think I think the approach now, which is helping, is, is sort of 
let's not put any pressure on anything. Let's not sure. worry about trying to write something better than Ghost Ship and whatever else. And just like, when it comes, it comes, you know. Right. If it comes, it comes, you know. So it's, and then, you know, you, you tie that together with sort of... It gets harder, too, you know, when you've done... Because we, we've only got four albums, but they're pretty jam-packed albums. I mean, sure. yeah. I mean, there's a lot of material yeah. there. There's a lot of lyrics. You know, covered a lot of, of different subjects. And it, it gets... It gets harder to not repeat yourself. You yeah. Know? yeah. And, and, and you see that, you know. Like, that's why, after a certain point, most bands, I think, either... They take a drastic left turn and do something right. you know, really different, or they start putting out stuff that sounds like kind of like sort of second-rate versions of stuff they've done in the yeah. past. You know, so so you know, try not to do any of those things and then and, and, uh, only write about stuff that I'm particularly sure. interested in. It's, it's kind of a challenge. So that's sort of where we are now. It's kind of I know it's kind of a non-answer, but. No, it's actually perfect. That's exactly. Well, you know, I I run into musicians who just uh, frankly don't care a lot about artistry or musicianship or getting better. You know, I had a band tell me, you know, we smoke weed, we drink beer, we play, you know, death metal. And and that's okay. That's what you want to do. But I also run into folks who want to get better each time. I can imagine that pressure. Is that kind of what you're talking about? Just the the one I. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's. And, you know, that's. A lot of people are like that. They just wanted to be in a band. They wanted to have fun. They wanted to perform. I was never like that. This kind of, you know, I'm I'm pretty shy by nature. So all this other other stuff is sort of I'm still getting adjusted to and trying to you know become a good front man and trying to sure you know be a better singer and stuff like that. Because none of that stuff was like my dream. You know, it's like that's cool. So it's it's uh, you know I mean, I'm really thankful for for. All, you know, all that's happened to us and the amazing fans that we have because they really are. I mean, even today, I've met people that have traveled just for this show from all over, yeah. you know, so. And, you know, that kind of adds to the pressure, too. You know, it's like, sure. You know, you don't want to disappoint people and, and you... I don't know, it's, it's hard to... Uh, it's just hard to sink in sometimes, you know, that, that it's happening to, right. to us because it really did just start out as a dream of writing songs and it's like suddenly there's all this other stuff that goes along with it, which is, which is great, but, yeah. you know, it's a lot. Um, you have to pull a tool and do an album 10 years down the road or something. Um, Mainer. Yeah. Um, well, people were waiting, apparently. Uh, apparently. Right. Um, so I, I've heard you talk about how Europeans appreciate the type of music that you play more. What, what do you think that is? Just the more fine taste, or they hear it more, or they? Um, I don't know. It's kind of an interesting thing because I used to think. Well, I mean, we were definitely more successful in Europe in terms of shows and you know, bigger audiences and, and whatever. Um, and I don't know if it has to do with. It's different now because back then, for a while, it seemed like I don't know. Uh, so much of, of what's popular here is sort of dictated by radio or, or sure. you know what the TV or whatever it was, and that's not really the case anymore, obviously. So, so I don't know where it's going, but also, you know, the the most recent U.S. shows that we've done have been pretty comparable to, to Europe stuff, so I don't know if it's, you know, if it's See, becoming it's more, but yeah, yeah, it feels like, that's why we kind of talk about hoping to do a, a bigger, a more thorough U.S. run, you know, sometime to kind of, because people seem to be taking, oh, yeah. paying attention now, so. I'm sure people would appreciate that. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to. I mean, it's up a lot of fans. It's yeah. funny because we played, you know, we've done, I think, five European tours, and we played all over the place and you know just, I mean we still haven't even played like New York and LA like you know most of the states so that's that's what I would I would like to do cool. so you've been at it for about 17 years what's the biggest difference you see the biggest change the biggest thing you notice um for me it's just still kind of surreal that like I was saying, people travel from all over the place to to hear these songs and to, to see you know to see us play and this 
You know what I mean? I'm really thankful for it, and I'm really kind of... It still blows me away. Yeah. You know, because it's... it's you know, obviously I've been at it for a long time writing-wise and stuff, but, you know, that part of it seemed to happen pretty quickly. It's like kind of around the Baz the World Bleeds album, you know, and kind of from there it just sort of really seemed to take off to a different level. So so that's, that's kind of what comes to mind for me. So, I mean, and that's not like some kind of false humility or whatever it's, it's still legitimately sure. I can't believe it when people say you know I came down from Canada for the show and I came drove up from Kentucky and whatever it's yeah. like oh man we better be good you know <laughs> <laughs> well, I, admit, I, you know, I, I don't get any false humility reading so, much, so that's <laughs> thanks, thanks. so, so where, where can fans pick up merch and music from Theocracy well obviously at our shows we always have plenty of merch shirts and CDs and vinyl and stuff and then um, online our label Ulterior Records has a, a web store um, I think that's probably the best place okay um, and then obviously any of the you know, Amazon and the user well, yeah. 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 well theocracymusic.com is your website yeah. and I know we can get the page yeah. 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 Um, and then otherwise find a show and come on and get some uh, music from Theocracy man thank you very much I appreciate your time I know it's valuable and so Thank you, man. This is great.